we've talked about leadership skills in the past, but we're going to talk a little bit about the skills that you gain once you've already kind of gained the basics. We talked about this earlier in the in the semester, but becoming a level four leader. What this is referring to is what is called the learning to lead process. Um, the learning to lead process is so you see it here. Um, and it's kind of a continuum of ability and consciousness level. Um, you start at the bottom, but it's kind of in reverse order here. So unconscious incompetence is kind of the, the lowest ranking on that continuum. And that is that you don't know how bad you are. We've all known people like this. Michael Scott from The Office is a perfect example of an unconscious incompetent. He doesn't know how incompetent he is. He thinks he's good, but he's not. Um, it's not a good place to be because you don't even know that you need to improve. Then there's conscious incompetent. This is being aware of your shortcomings, knowing that you lack when it comes to leadership. I mean, whatever area you're in as a leader, you know that you are incompetent in some areas. It's a good place to be, even though you are incompetent, because you know what you need to improve upon. Um, so it's, that's why it's called conscious incompetent, because you are consciously aware of your incompetence. Then there's conscious competence. That is um, being aware, but also being competent. So this is when you can do a good job, but you have to focus. You have to control yourself. You have to plan ahead. Um, you need to really plan and think hard. It doesn't just come as second nature to you. Um, second nature is when it is unconscious competence. This is when you don't even need to be aware of it in order to be competent. It just comes easy to you. It's second nature. It's you're able to just do things in the drop of a hat without any planning, without any thinking about it. It just is it is easy for you to do it. Um, that's the goal. That's the level four. So one, two, three, and then four unconscious competence is the level four leader. And then you can take that once you're at, at unconscious competence and go beyond that to an even higher level, um, which is what this is talking about. When you these when you're kind of at the advanced level of leadership, you're control you're always encouraging big fun or flow as it's often called, um, not to be confused with performance flow, which is kind of the the idea of um, choosing different levels of games that are going to have different energy um, energy levels. We talked about that earlier, but no, this is different. This is called flow or big fun is another name for it because it is kind of the the kind of fun where you you lose track of what's going on in the moment and you your um, your sense of time and sense of self-awareness um, goes away because you're not worried about any of those things you're just living in the moment um, flow is the main goal of play leadership or any kind of leadership frankly especially in recreation um, but it is uh, to explain flow just a little bit more um, it is the sweet spot between boredom and anxiety and so as a leader you're constantly you need to be adjusting the challenge level in order to balance that so people don't get bored, but also so they don't get anxious. Um, some other things to keep in mind as a leader is the energy level, um, keeping people's attention, um, constantly changing the game in order to keep that flow going, um, minimizing external rewards so that they are doing it for the experience and not just for the reward, um, helping them be in the moment, helping them relax again so they can be in the moment, the sequencing of the different events to keep a flow throughout an entire program, um, and then feedback that's immediate um, and very accessible. Um, that's how you manage flow and keep it going. It is the main goal. The other main goal is empowerment. This is helping people feel like they can get better. It's often called self-efficacy in recreation where you are – you accomplish something great, and then because of that accomplishment, you believe in your ability to do things outside of recreation. So because you climbed that difficult rock wall, you now believe in your ability to do better on a test or to do better in any realm of life. It just basically increases your empowerment, your self-empowerment. Um, and that's one of the other goals of being a leader is to empower those that we lead, either by giving them leadership roles, helping them take risks, um, letting them play a part, um, give, sending joke, giving them jokes that they're going to laugh at, anything. It, it, it helps them feel empowered and also to feel ownership over the experience that they're having. Um, play leadership or any kind of leadership, frankly, is art, especially in recreation. It is an art. You need to be able to be spontaneous. You need to be able to be 
creative when you need um, and you need to be able to be in the moment and constantly be changing things. Um, for example, Duck, Duck, Goose or any other game, for example, how could you mix that up to make it more interesting? Because it can be pretty boring on its own, but that's an, it's an art. It's, it's an art form. And when I see people that are very good at this, it's, it's honestly inspiring to watch them because they are so good at what they're doing. They're clearly unconscious, competent and beyond. Um, one other important key factor is a flexibility, being able to work with what you're given. You might plan on something and then that's not what you're given and so you have to change things up. That is a really important quality to be able to have and will entirely change depending on the situation. If you're not able to change with it, then you're going to lose out and so are your participants. Um, and then last but not least is being positive. Um, discipline is a big part of it. I like this term, um, this quote, kids are like a wet bar of soap. You hold them too tight, you lose them. You hold them too loose, and you also lose them. Finding that just right. Um, Self-respect, responsibility, values, what, what values you're going to project onto the group or what values you're going to keep to yourself, caring for them versus being the, the disciplinarian. And there is a kind of a, a magic middle ground in order to make that happen. And it is difficult to figure it out. Um, but if you look back on like the coaching model from previous lectures, you can you can see how that can be done without losing relationships with the students, building those, those relationships of trust. You don't lose them just because you're disciplined, because you're being positive and yet assertive at the same time. <laughs>